Hi, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Too Opinionated. When Brett and I started this uh, podcast about a year and a half ago, one of the first people that I wanted to, uh, to absolutely have on the show is our guest today, and I'm absolutely thrilled uh, that we were able to make that work out. If you were a uh, fan of any of the hit shows from the late 70s up through the 90s, then you absolutely uh, will recognize him. I, I won't remember all of them, so I'm going to read just a quick list of some of the shows that he was on. Um, Night Core, Who's the Boss, Murder, She Wrote, Family Ties, Designing Women, The A-Team, New Heart, Love Boat, Barney Miller, um, Seinfeld, Sliders, ER. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. Rockford Files, there's another one. Uh, yeah. He's also in, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He was also in uh, movies 1941 and The Client and several others. Uh, so please join with me and, and welcome Walter Okowitz. So welcome, Walter. Good job. I was 11 before I could say it correctly. So. <laughs> Did I get it right? You got it exactly right. Good job. Oh, good excellent. To see you. <laughs> it's good to see you, sir. So, you know, Emily and I were lucky enough to... Um, uh, to travel out to uh, to California a couple years ago, and and spend a little bit of time with you, and you were you were so gracious and and kind of put up with our nonsense, and, and it was just a great uh, great visit. But at that time, you were uh, recovering, um, you know, from from things you've been dealing with for years, and it, as as we can see now, you're you're still going through some stuff. So I, I don't want to speak for you. So let let me give you a couple minutes to to kind of go through everything that you've uh, uh, been through. And, and what you're dealing with and, and you know, how people can, uh, can help if, uh, if they're so inclined. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> I had an infection in my left leg. Uh, I started with having a knee replacement on the right and that went well and I've never had a problem. When we did the left leg, got infected, it got reinfected. I had four different knee replacements, which yeah. is almost unheard of that they would do that many, but um, so it's been close to 20 years that I've been fighting this. I've had almost 40 surgeries on the leg. And now I'm fighting it in a different way. I've got a, a new doctor and a new guy that's uh, he just got me tuned into ways I can clear the bacteria out of the leg and do all these things that might make a difference that wasn't made before. Um, in a strange way, um, this back, this um, epidemic going on now uh, almost helped me because I was scheduled to have the leg amputated in early March. Right. And they, and they canceled that and I canceled that <clears throat> because um, it wasn't considered a, a mandatory surgery and hospitals were flooded at that point. Um, so I waited up a little bit just when I got this new doctor. He had some other plans. So now I'm on a 10 month plan to get up and walk with a walker, uh, even though I still ha I don't have a knee or a knee replacement in there. I have what's called a spacer, which just oh, wow. gets the bacteria uh, bombarded with antibiotics, but you can't bend it in any way. And so if I get up on the walker, which I'm hoping to do in the next month, then I have to like stay with that leg perfectly straight uh, because there's no way for it to bend at this point but it's looking good and things are happening and I'm losing a little weight and I'm getting on a plant-based diet which yeah. is essential to your health it's just I, I've learned so much about that and I've gotten to sit home as I was talking to you earlier Michael and do some writing um, yeah great I'm, I'm a writer I've always been a writer it's almost the first ambition I had uh, in fact, I remember a strange little story. Uh, when I was about nine years old, maybe eight years old, we were given an assignment to use 25 vocabulary words in a sentence. And so I took them in the exact order I was given them and um, made a story out of it. I made this great story about clowns and circus and this using the exact order that the vocabulary words came. Well, right. I gave it to the, to the, the nun <clears throat> uh, and she made it an F because she said, oh, no. you, you couldn't have done this. No eight-year-old has this kind of a, you know, your parents did this. And so my mother, she hadn't even read it. 
uh, she came running in and said, I didn't touch him. Nobody talked to him about it. I have nothing to do with it. That's just, he writes. So it's one of the first visions I had of being a writer was, you know, when I was like eight years old. That's great. And now I'm writing, I'm writing a book called uh, No, No, It Really Happened because of all the wonderful stories that I've had and the bad things too. Yeah. Just, just the, the pitfalls. Writing a book of monologues for actors. Uh, I like that. I'm, yeah, I'm writing. I'm writing. I like writing. My son, who is uh, followed me along the way, I uh, went to all the things I acted in all my life uh, since he was born, is now a very successful writer in Hollywood. Um, he's now writing a Stephen King short story. Oh, wow. A screenplay and he's doing a science fiction movie. And he's like, uh, he's gotten some awards already. And he, he uh, my son, uh, as you know, you're being a dad. You want to talk <laughs> about your son more than anything. But he um, he was living with me and when he was, his mom and I were separated when he was very young. Right. And, but we're still really good friends, which is great. Um, but anyway, he was living with me. He was a senior in high school. Um, and he didn't have some uh, courses transfer over to Burbank High from Escondido because they don't transfer some and they weren't high enough grades. So they wanted him to stay another year in high school. And he said, I would rather take the SATs and, you know, get into college that way and not go back to high school for a year you know, what graduating senior wants to go back for another year. Right. So he did that. And <clears throat> a couple of months later, we're sitting, <clears throat> excuse me, we're sitting, uh, and he gets mail from the SAP. And it, he says, I don't know what happened here. It's weird. I, I must have gotten the same amount wrong in each section, because all five sections say 800. GED, I'm sorry. The GED <laughs> test, but he just... Uh, reminded me. Um, anyway, he, uh, I said, well, that doesn't sound logical. Why would you get the exact same amount wrong in each section? So right. we called and they said, wait a minute, is this, this is Zachary Oakwood's that Zachary? No, no, 800 is perfect. He said, you got <laughs> a perfect score in the GED. One of, uh, out of 9,000 people in California took it. Yeah. The only one that got a perfect score. And so that was a big hubbub. You went went on to a, a, an art school to learn how to do computer games. Um, yep. Came out with honors uh, after three years of school. After about a year of trying, he said, yeah, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but I'd rather write screenplays. I'd rather write films. And I said, well, if it took you a year to figure out what you really want to do, you're, you're ahead of the game. So That's right. <laughs> our money on that so he worked as an intern for like two years but was handing stuff in to the people he worked for uh reading scripts right and finally they just said you know this is really good we're going to submit this within, within uh, a couple of months of them making that decision he uh he sold the script for a hundred thousand dollars oh wow now he's of course explained to me i just signed for a hundred thousand dollars and we're still eating uh noodles ramen because <laughs> Well, it's got to be this first and that first and this rewrite and this happens first. And so it just really drags out. Unlike being an actor, get paid right away, but uh, right. it can drag on for years. So he's, he's sold about five things since then. And he's hot. He's hot as a, as a writer. That's and awesome. Good, helping me. I had to have some dental work done and all kinds of things done. And, you know, he coughed in with uh, 20 grand almost. Oh, wow. That's a good sign. Yeah, you know, it's we're family. Yeah. We're family. In fact, I've gotten some great help from his mother, you know, which there's nothing but love between us, which is great. Yeah, that absolutely uh, is, is awesome. And I'm not surprised. Yeah, one of the, the great things about you, Walter, is that you're, you've been so positive throughout this entire ordeal and, and you've got such a, a hopeful Outlook. So I, I don't have any doubt that eventually you'll you'll get it uh, beat and get back on your feet. But you know, how do you how do you stay so positive? 
I, you know, oh God, what, what's the answer to that? Uh, I, I, you know, who is it? Abraham Lincoln said I, he decides in the morning how he's going to act that day and feel and <laughs> not choose and acts the way he decides. Yeah. You know, I, I've been blessed. You know, like I was telling you earlier, my son who got married four years ago is, you know, two babies already. He's got a two and a half year old little girl. He sends me video. He sent me a video just yesterday about her running around this circle. And everybody was chasing this little two and a half year old. And just, I'm blessed. I mean, guy, my career is a blessing. You know? Yeah. The people I've met are a blessing. The people I've been involved with are a blessing. This is a tough obstacle, but. Yeah, sometimes, I, like I said, I was watching TV, seeing people that I had worked with 20 years ago and, and things they're doing now going, except for this injury, I'd be doing that too. Yeah, so, yeah, you, you absolutely would. You know, we'd, we'd see you, because back when you were working, you were on everything. You were was, all over the place. I had a friend call me once and he said, um, I just watched you were on A-Team uh, and then you were on Hardcastle and McCormick right after that. And yeah, get, there's I'm, one. I got to get off the phone. I'm going to see if you're doing the fucking news. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a great I, time. I used to stay up. Um, Hardcastle and McCormick was one of them that I think, I think that was one of them that CBS used to um, rotate with um, uh, like um, uh, McClintock, oh, not McClintock. Um, McClung? Is there a McClung? I don't know. They had three or four series that they would kind of rotate through. And that was one that they would show during primetime and then reshow late at night. And uh, when I was younger, I'd stay up and watch those uh, with my mother because she's a she's night owl. So she, you know, her hours are all flipped around. Yeah. Uh, so that, yeah. that's a pretty good show. I haven't heard that one in a while. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the, the big story is. I, I was hired to work one day on 1941 Spielberg's movie. Yeah. He put us alone in this room because we were what was called a cover set, which meant if it rained and they had to come indoors, we were going to do a scene, but otherwise just hold on because we're working outside right now. So he left me for three days with John Candy and Mickey Rourke and Dan Aykroyd wow. all in, in this barracks. And I took over. I said, why don't we do this? We'll do this. And we'll spider book down. We'll do this and that. And they just backed off going, this guy's crazy. You know, <laughs> so they came in finally after three or four days. <clears throat> and uh, we did what we had worked on. And he uh, looked at it. He left. Spielberg was so supportive. Uh, and then he said, wow, you're really good. Are you, are you busy for the next few weeks? And I said, uh, no, I got nothing to do. <laughs> and, uh, we'll have somebody call you. And I wound up working 28 weeks. Oh, that's awesome. From one day job. Now, during that time, I met the head of CBS who sent me on pilot auditions. So yeah. I went nine pilot auditions for the next, I guess it must be two weeks. Uh, and I got them all. I got offers on every one of them. So wow. that was when I was hot. <laughs> so I, <laughs> it was great. So I did a show called The Last Resort. Really a success. Yeah. So wonderful, wonderful people to work with. Gary Goldberg and Asad Kalada and some great people. And, and uh, was named the best new person on television by Us Magazine at one point. Yeah. So things were happening. It was really, really a, well, and, and I, if I remember right about that uh, show, I mean, it's still, it, it was really well critically received. Um, but didn't it take place, it was like you were college students working in a kitchen or something. Exactly, yeah, we were all waiters. Yeah. So, good times and, and, yeah, it was great. Gary yeah. Goldberg was wonderful. He did Family Ties. Yeah. Which, but, uh, but he was a good friend. He'd always bring me in. I did two or three Family Ties. I did. All the shows he was doing, he'd use me as a backup. If he, thought, <laughs> if he hired somebody who wasn't working out, he'd say, Walter, you come in, do this part. You only got two days. I'm fine, I'll do it. Let's go. <laughs> Everybody said no to him. He's a good man. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I heard that, um, and I, it may have been from you, but but I heard that you used to call uh, Spielberg uh, Boy Wonder. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> Boy Wonder. What do you want to do on this thing? Spielstein. I called him Spielstein. <laughs> I used to, he loved it. He's great. In fact, I saw him 15 years later, right after he'd done Schindler's List, getting yeah. this big People's Choice Award. And the show I was on, Grace Under Fire, was getting an award as the best new show. So I thought I'd go over and say, hello, I haven't seen him in 15 years. And yeah. So I, I, I saw him and I started to walk toward his table. He saw me, he got up and he went, Walter! <laughs> Threw his arms around me and he said, Walter, Walter, I've been following your career. You've been doing great. And all I could think of to say was, uh, uh, yeah, you too. <laughs> that <man. laughs> he was always really great to me and sent messages to people that like some of the people I taught an acting class for years some of my students would get into you know they were adult students get into one of his movies and he'd, they'd say hello and he oh send Walter my best that's great but I'm trying to reach him now try to get him to donate something yeah hey, he might have a couple extra bucks lying around he, maybe maybe <laughs> I just read the, there was a special on a couple of nights ago and they said Spielberg is now the only director to ever have his collected works go past ten billion dollars. Holy that, cow. They were ten, ten billion dollars. It's amazing. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I who knows? That that was probably your uh, your acting that propelled his career. I feel like I've inspired him more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, one of the uh, – uh, there are so many. I, I Your stuff is on all the time now because, you know, all those shows from the 80s and 90s are, are getting popular again. So I, sure. I saw you on your uh, uh, Murder, She Wrote episode the other day. and Oh, the opera singer. Yeah, the <laughs> opera singer. That, that was really good. The, uh, that A-Team episode's on all the time. I see that one all the time. That was really time. great. You know, it's uh, – uh, my favorite is always – been your role on uh, Seinfeld, and I know it wasn't a huge role, but I just thought it was so hilarious as the uh, as the cable. Really guy. fun, yeah. Good to work with those people too, because I was doing Grace Under Fire at the time, and yeah. Brett Butler was going through some hard times, and she didn't want to rehearse. She didn't. She had lived and threw us off half the time. And she was just, she's much much better now. I'm glad to say, but she was going through a real uh, real drug problem at the time. Yeah. But anyway, uh, right across the uh, the hall right across the alley over there at CBS was where they were filming Seinfeld. And I got hired to do that. And, and uh, they want to rehearse every second on the breaks on the, you know, they, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name, David? Uh, Kramer, whatever. Oh, Kramer, the guy that plays Kramer. Oh, guess. Michael uh, Richards? Richards. Yeah. And he said, do you mind working on lunch? We'd work on this. And he would get it brilliant and go, oh, let's go get to something else with that. Let's try this. So I thought, oh, I'm, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. <laughs> Other than somebody that won't rehearse, you got somebody that can't get enough of it. And that's they why can't get enough. Up. That's why their show was so good because they, the best. Yeah, yeah, it, and it still holds up. I mean, you know, other than the fact with the, the technology at the time, but it the show holds up. Yeah, it's Same, really good. Barry Stiller just passed away. The yeah. Father of the yeah he, he was great i worked with him on murder she wrote and, yes uh, yeah and uh i was telling him about something that he was reading that i thought was really great oh that's really nice you know so it, god he, he sent me the, a copy of the book and you know a couple of days later after we wrapped and you know just a good good man good yeah and well fun. and funny he's yeah. so funny you want a piece of me? Uh, you want? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I didn't know this one, um, and I, and I probably should have. But you were on um, Dolly Parton's variety show for a while, like a pretty pretty regular right. guest. Yeah, I uh, yeah I did quite a few of those. In fact, my son was a guest on one of the Christmas shows. Yeah, uh, I I used to see some of those because my parents would watch those, but I. I just hadn't recalled that, but you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of things did you do on the show? There was a, a running bit on the show where she played a waitress in a diner. Yeah. Uh, at Ollie's place. And it was, she was just, and guests would come in and she'd 
have my stories with them. I was Bubba. Bubba was the truck driver that came in and she was the best friends with. And so, yeah, she, she wanted me back. When Zach was on the show, uh, he was about, God, he must have been six or something. But he was a wild man. He, he liked her and he would go and sit in her lap and interrupt the rehearsals. And, <laughs> and so, the, uh, there was a singer. What's, do you remember, David? There was a singer that was a guest star on Dolly Parton. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt Davis. Matt Davis. Matt yeah. Davis. Okay. Mac Davis, yeah, yeah. He was singing this song, Christmas is for Kidness. Why don't we have Zachary sit on Mac's lap? You know, so he was so wild, just energetic. He was, you know, he was, I gave him some talking to still and he calmed down a little. <laughs> In fact, Dolly told me on the second day, well, Zachary seems behaved. Did, it, did you give him an animal tranquilizer? She said, <laughs> <laughs> said, yeah, pretty close. So anyway, he, singing the song, and I told the, the, the woman that was in charge of the kids, Zachary is better if you give him something to do. So she gave him this little white bear and he was supposed to make sure everybody could see it and the camera was on him. You know. So he had this job to do. So I knew that would calm him down. Yeah. But in the middle of the, uh, in the song on, on Mac Davis's lap, uh, the sound guy or the, photography guy called lighting that's it that's the word uh i'm on a lot of drugs uh, <laughs> the lighting guy said we're getting too much glare off that bear you gotta lose the white bear you know so yeah so mm. they're singing the song and zachary realizes the bear's gone oh no he just pushes off max lap that's my bear i gotta get my bear what's fine god god <laughs> they were in such a hurry, they couldn't drive. So they got some other kid to go on the lap, and, uh, and the uh, and the stage father, me, I'm on the side, you know, oh, no, it was going to be so great to share that at Christmas. So he was still in the scene. He just, but I, they eventually got a copy of him right before they threw him off the side. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I can find it now. But anyway. <laughs> it's actually a real blessing. I just. I only had one kid, but he's he's the best. I was an only child. And yeah. I tell him, boy, if you can get you know more than one kid because it's hard for kids to grow up with, the, with the, as an only child. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I had trouble. My mom was an alcoholic. Right. So it was just tough all around. Uh, but and then I had asthma. I just do free association here with you. Yeah. I had asthma really bad. I was in an oxygen tent like four years in a row when I was young, six years old, seven, yeah. eight. And anyway, I couldn't do any sports. I loved sports. My father loved sports. Couldn't do it. Finally, the doctor said, I was like 11 years old. The doctor said, look, why don't you sign him up for Little League? Look, it's going to either make his asthma better, it'll break through, or it'll put him back in the hospital for a day and we're doing that now, so it won't make any difference. So I did. I, you know, wow, I can fucking finally play again. Well, I wound up breaking all these little league baseball averages. <laughs> I batted 702 in the little league. Holy cow. So I became this jock. But I love sports because I'd been denied it for so many years. So yeah. I played baseball, football, and a little basketball in high school. Went on to college and played football at the uh, small Catholic school in Kansas, loved sports, would always find a place. And I was misleading for most people because I was yeah. really fast and I weighed 240 pounds, 230 pounds at that point in my life. So I'd get these like snotty little guys that worked on the crew in a movie and, and they'd be like, <laughs> well, it's race, well, it's race, see what happens. And I'd fucking blow them away. And, <laughs> Like 10 yards on a 100 yard race. So I loved sports. It was really a big thing for me. And I awesome. awesome. can't help but say it's probably the main reason I'm in a, you know, in a hospital bed now because I, of course, the infections that came after that it really what did it. But I was a catcher and that's what screwed up my knees so bad that I had to have yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, when, when you first, 
had uh, trouble. You were on a movie with uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Is that that right? Yeah, good old boys. We were in, good old boys in Texas, and uh, yeah, I'm lucky. I did three movies with him, including The Client, which is probably the high water mark of yeah of my career. Yeah, you were terrific in The Client. That was awesome. Wow, that came out great. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, but, uh, I I saw that you were. Um, pretty good friends with uh, Harry Anderson from Night Court, and that you uh, got him a uh, a pass for the uh, Twin Peaks set. Yeah, he met David Lynch. He wanted to meet him, and David was delighted. Um, which is funny because even going back to the Steven Spielberg story, uh, Steven said, "Do you think you can introduce me to Libby, the little girl on her show? He just loved her. He thought she was really, yeah, very, you know." good actress and as a little nine-year-old doing great and uh yeah fuck steven spielberg you can get him you know, <laughs> walking over to our table spielberg saying oh this is steven spielberg everybody's jaws are down at their <laughs> on the ground I just wanted to meet the beef you know so, that's great so, yeah kids are great too yeah so so, so did you um did you get to watch all of the uh, the new Twin Peaks? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, can Can you explain what the heck happened? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, we had we loved it, it, and you were you were terrific in in that too. And I know they had to uh, they had to do a little bit of work to have you on there. Uh, yeah, they had to prop up my leg underneath the bar in a way yeah. that I could just sit there and do that scene. But, you know, uh, David wanted me in the movie, and I was, of course, blessed by that. I hadn't done anything in, like, 10 years. Right. At that and uh, Couldn't tell. It, he, he came over and gave me this, you know, page-long phone conversation. Yeah. Uh, gave me an hour to make it work. I made it work, did one take, and they used that take. He said, that's it. Doesn't get better than that. Let's just do that. Let's use that. One. <laughs> so I went, yeah, I fucking I still can do this. It's like riding a bike. You don't forget. Well, you, you well that was for, for Emily and I, that was our favorite part of the whole show was getting to see God you. Uh, you act. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really, uh, uh, really good. So we enjoyed that. I, I think there, the other one I wanted to ask you about, um, cause it was one that, that I really enjoyed was, um, uh wizards and warriors ah, yeah that's the best yeah it's very underrated i think it might have been ahead of its time i don't know because there was some great stuff in it yeah there it, really was i love the jeff conway jeff and i were really really good friends eventually and uh, he's a little bit a little bit stubborn and uh i had to what's the, what's the word i almost had to trick him to give him notes because he didn't kind of believe you told actors what to do. But I could tell when things weren't working and he made me, you know. So I would I would wind up setting him up. And this is really out of love. I swear to God, I really love him. <laughs> I would say, you know, I can't get any, do you have any ideas on what I could do with this? You know, because I'm really having a hard time. And, and he'd say, oh, yeah, well, maybe you do that. And then, oh, God, that'd be great too. too. Till he eventually said, and if you got any ideas for me, just tell me. That's great that we could help each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking the bait, and here's what we can do. <laughs> but it was you know, the best. The only yeah. negative side of that was I turned down uh, Cheers to do, uh, because Cheers was three lines at a bar, or do I want to go up fighting dragons on horseback? <laughs> That's right. I'll take the dragon. Thank you. That yeah, great. yeah, absolutely. Good that's uh, that's great. What was the? You were on so many shows. Uh, what what was the worst experience you ever had? Uh, let's see. I don't, I don't want you burning bridges, but I figure it's been long enough now. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh, wow, worst experience. I, none. I don't think I had a bad experience. Uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I, one of the things you told me. Uh, oh, I'll tell you. Okay. 18. 
George Papard was a, a really a jerk. Oh, he, you know, yeah, you told me that one. Now that I think about it, you did say that once before. Said he was pretty rough to work with. Yeah, everybody else was like wonderful. In fact, you know, I wound up. Uh, Dirk Benedict liked me so much; he wanted me to be his his best friend when he was in Hamlet, uh, and he brought me to New York to do the play. Oh, there wow! Was a bad experience. I took two weeks of rehearsals and then got fired because I just couldn't handle the language. Everybody else in the cast had done twenty Shakespearean plays. I'd done one in college. Right. I just I didn't do it. I couldn't do it. I. I, it would take me an, an hour and a half to learn two lines if I got the meterage right and the yeah, but all right. So I came back. <laughs> the great story. My best, all my great stories are about my teacher, Milton Gonzalez. Yeah, it's one of the most brilliant men ever. But I came back from New York having been fired, and decided that I was going to do a scene in class that would knock him dead. So I picked. The psychiatrist thing in Equus when he's talking to the kid. And I did all this stuff and ah, fucking wowed him. And I got this <laughs> class and Milton stopped and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. When it was over, he said, uh, what do you all think of what Walter just did? They all said, oh my God, it was just great. Because I wowed him. <laughs> and then he said, anybody that likes any part of what he just did, should seriously consider why they're in this class. It is diametrically opposed to everything I think good acting is. I've been in that class for eight years. <laughs> never said anything negative. And now he, he said, this man just came back from New York. He was fired in a play, even though he was the most talented person in this. He just couldn't handle the language. That's just administration. We could handle that. Um, but he's going through the same stuff in his life that this psychiatrist has gone through in the play. He yeah. doesn't bring any of that to the, to the screen. He doesn't bring any of that to the performance. And he starts bringing up the stuff that I confessed to him in private. Oh, you know? no. And I'm going, it's a dog and I explore it. No, and you can't. He's a good now. Do the same. Quick, do the same. And we did the same, and it was way different. <laughs> now. <laughs> a human being bleeding from his emotions as opposed to a really great stock English actor performing. You know? Right. And then yeah, when I was, and the, the applause was real different. He said, see, that's what this man's capable of and why I couldn't take that other shit. <laughs> <laughs> he knew. <laughs> he always did. He's a brilliant man. Well, one of, one of the great things, uh, you know, that I've always enjoyed about your acting is you're, you're very expressive. And I, I think you, you convey a lot without, you know, saying much. And I'd, I'd heard you do a, an interview and you, you said, uh, I'll, I'll botch the quote, but it was, it was something about, it's uh, not about the words, but it's, it's about, you know, the, the look or the, uh, the setting and, and the things that go into, uh, uh, you know, what you're doing and not what you're uh, saying, basically. Yeah, you really botched that up. That wasn't, there, it was not, I don't know. It's, it's never about the words, though. I know that. I yeah. know it's about, you know, uh, yeah, what's what's the internal thing going on? What's, yeah. what's, what's your life like? What's the, what's the evaluation? How important is it? You know, yeah. uh, a monologue about somebody having sex is different from a virgin than they, than from a hooker. It's just a different evaluation. Right. Right. So you got to figure out where people are. Yeah. So I've had such experience with, I was auditioning for a thing called half and half, which was about yeah. a brother, two, two brothers, one's a black man, one's a white man from the same mother. And, and uh, it was about a, a newspaper thing. And I went in to read to network, going to network, for those of you who don't know, is the big last step. You know, all yes. the net executives come to watch your, 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 your little audition. So I went into this room. It's funny, I was up against Jeffrey Tambor. The only time oh. I, ever, I ever read against him, and I got the part. So I, <laughs> he was Milton's uh, a substitute teacher. So 
I got to rub that in for a lot of years. But I went into the audition, and, and it was at this NBC uh, arena kind of stage, almost like, a, like in a hospital operating room where there were like tiers of seats. And there were like 40 people in this fucking room from the network. And I walked in, I looked at my, whoa, I said, it's a lot of people. I said, <laughs> I said, that's too many people. Could you talk amongst yourselves, figure out, you know, who the least important is and get him out of here? Because, and they all started to laugh. Oh, maybe him. Let's get rid of him. Let's, so I, I said, oh, no, no, no. I, I don't want to make any kind of it. Let's, let's, let's do it, I guess. If you have to be here. But I always had that attitude in audition. Yeah. You know. Might as well play, might as well have fun, might as well show them what they're, right. gonna get, what they're gonna get if I'm on stage with them or I'm in the, in the booth with them or I'm doing the, the scene. This is what you're gonna be dealing with. And well, it, it served you uh, very well. That's, uh, that's great. Uh, well, Walter, this has been wonderful. I, I, don't, wanna, I don't wanna wear you out, but this, is, this has really been fun for, uh, for me. Oh, it's I'm been doing a, to, uh, to I think up. you talked about it earlier, I'm doing this fundraiser. Yes, I, I, I definitely want, uh, want you to give that out, we'll, and we'll include that as well. Yeah, I need to get a hospital bed. The one I have, which is not covered by insurance, I paid for it. It's breaking down. And to do the new things that the new doctor wants me to do to get to walking again, I got to get this bed, a new bed. Yeah. So uh, hospital beds are not cheap, and so that's what I'm trying to raise money for. David, so it's GoFundMe. You go fund me, go to uh, the search and then put in Walter Okowitz. Put in Walter Okowitz at GoFundMe. Do a yeah. search. Uh, maybe we can go to the Need a Hospital Bed. And I think the last campaign I've been doing is called Needs a Hospital Bed. So. Needs a Hospital Bed. Yeah, I, I've got the I've got the link and I'll make sure that it's uh, included in the in everything we post. Oh great. Yeah. What yeah, fun. absolutely, and and I encourage everybody to to definitely uh, you know take a look and and help you out. I know you're always willing to uh, uh, to return the favor any way that you can. And, and yeah, give me a call. We leave your address. I'll send you an autograph picture. Tell me what yeah. your favorite show I did was. I usually have pictures from anything that I've yeah. done. And, uh, and uh, so many people have been so good. I because I've been doing this for you know ten or twelve years. Doing right. Fun. Users. And I've had so many people make great donations, and they all say the same thing almost: is that, wow, you made me laugh so many times in the past. If I can return the favor, usually a fan doesn't get to do that. Yeah. Um, but you know, but thank you for what you've done. And I don't think anybody's ever made me feel like, other than it was an equal exchange that they felt it was an honor to do. And, and yeah, I feel a way about it when 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 I give to somebody or compliment somebody it's, well yeah of course it's yeah. a gift we all got to take care that the more blessed to give than receive is not a a joke it's a cliche for a reason it you know and i yeah i love helping i've coached people on on the phone i've done things with skype people that say and people that i've had at least 10 or 12 times that they couldn't give anything they had right. no so and so just happened that they got a Pay for the baby's food and you know and that's and but could you still give me a picture could you i need help with this I, I, it's not about giving money and i'll give you something back it's about let's all help each other that's that's right that's right and, i love that and if you can give five dollars or you can give five hundred dollars either way it's uh it's every fun. little bit helps it does yeah. you know, I, I got a five dollar thing just yesterday and it was from a kid that he wrote me because he was a big Twin Peaks fan and he uh, had just gotten his first paycheck from McDonald's or something. And, you know, he didn't have a lot of money, but he wanted to get something. So he sent oh, five dollars. And, and I sent him a picture back and uh, the whole sending picture thing cost me about $6. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna get the bet on that I'm one. sure it made his day though. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, we we gonna get uh, any baseball to watch this year? Are we gonna get what? 
Are we getting any baseball to watch this year? Is it, are they going to get Dodgers back to play? Got to get even with Houston. The Dodgers have to come back. And, uh, have to. Have to. They're, they're, I, the last I heard was maybe the 4th of July around then. Yeah, they're saying in July. And uh, and ba- I want to get basketball back. It's such a good year for the Lakers. Yeah. They got finally got a team after so long. Yeah. Yeah, I hope they can play as well. You know, I I know you're a sports fan, so I, you're suffering along with uh, with the rest of us, uh, waiting on stuff to come back. Yeah, well, it, I'm, you know what I'm learning? I'm learning a lot. My assistant got me a, a Roku. Uh, uh, yeah. It's funny because I get all these things, and I'm really learning the, the benefits of binge watching. <laughs> and then I watch this thing. What's that one called, David, that uh, – Oh, defending Jacob. It's on yeah. one of the cable stations. And I watched the whole thing. I watched all twelve episodes to the end, and I never realized it was Chris Evans, the Captain America, was playing the lead. Yeah, that was. Uh, it's on Apple Apple Watch or, or yes. something, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I want to watch that one. I haven't seen that one yet, but I, that's definitely very, on my list. It's very good because it, it digs deep, and he's a he's a hell of an actor. Yeah. It's, even better. It's just really great. Uh, today I watched a special on William Friedkin, who directed, uh, you know, uh, uh, The Exorcist and French. Oh, right. Series. But it's funny because I went to the normal thing I have, which is on my normal TV, and looked into their search engine, and they had nothing other than the documentary by Friedkin. But I'd heard all these things he was telling stories. So then I went over to Roku and I typed in William Friedkin. They had 32 of his movies. Oh. <laughs> all right, Roku. <laughs> all in the morning, all these different eyes. Ah, such good stuff. Oh, uh, that's great. Well, hey, Walter, thank you so much. And, you know, we're, uh, we're, you're definitely in our thoughts. And, you know, we, uh, we talk about you a, a lot. And we've missed uh, seeing you. And, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get you up and moving and, Maybe we can uh, come visit again at some point. I'd love it, man. I'll be back. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm not. I know it. (laughs) I'm blessed to be in this industry. It's all I wanted to do when I was in in school, and uh, I got it. You know, I got what I was was asking for. Yeah, that's that's great. Well, hold on one second, Walter. I'm going to hit pause. All right. So that was the great uh, Walter Olkowitz, and wow. I. I, I absolutely love Walter and you know, he's, he's such a good actor and such a good person. And you know, the, he, he downplayed it a little bit, but you know, the struggles that, that he's been through are, are, are real. And, you know, he's, he's really uh, fought through a lot. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll include that uh, link. If you, if you want to uh, help Walter, you know, I, anything uh, and everything would be appreciated. So I, I hope you'll uh, consider doing that. It'll definitely go for a, for a good cause. And that's a, a, a talent that we want to see uh, back out there uh, working and, and, and writing and acting. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get that real soon. So that's our show and, and appreciate uh, everybody sticking with us and, and thank you. Um, you know, don't forget to check us out uh, on Facebook under uh, MeisterCon or on our website under MeisterCon.com. Uh, until next time, bye.